Hey everybody, it's Miss Ruin. Today we are going to create this really cool continuous contour line drawing. So let's take a look at the supplies you need in order to make it. The first thing that you need is your watercolor paper. You also need tissue paper, watercolor paint, brush and water, palette paper, or if you have a palette, even just a yogurt cap will work just fine. You need a pencil, a Sharpie, your phone or some pictures, a printer, piece of printer paper or any other drawing paper that you have that you can just draw on. And you need a scissors. So let's go ahead. I have all my supplies out in front of me, so I'm gonna get started. So one of the first things that you should just know is what a continuous contour line drawing is. And it's kind of what it sounds like. So it's a line drawing that's done where you're only using one line. You never lift the pencil off the paper. So let me show you a couple other examples here. We'll look at these in just a little bit. But you can see these are, they look kind of funky and that's what's fun about them. They look more abstract. And artists like Alexander Calder, he did a lot of these types of drawings and loads of other artists as well, just because it's really good practice. So you can see that there's just one line. I could probably follow this through the entire thing and it would just be one line. So you never remove your pencil off the paper. Okay, so that is what a continuous contour line drawing is. To make this project, we need to start out by just adding some paint to our paper. So what we're gonna do, you want to grab your paintbrush and you wanna have your palette paper out, okay? Keep my example and I have my watercolors. I'm using my concentrated watercolors here and you could also just do it with regular watercolors too. So we're going to do the wet into wet method where we start out by applying water first to our paper. So you just want to paint some blobs and you can't see mine probably but if you tip it to the side you know in the right light you can see it. Doesn't really matter where, you could do perfect shapes or circles. If you wanna do something like that, doesn't really matter. Let's see, how many do I have? I have about five. And I want them to reach the edge of my paper. Okay, great, I have about seven. So now that I've, I've painted on my blobs with water, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my paint. So I'm just first gonna add some paint to my palette. Remember with these concentrated watercolors, you always wanna add water to your paint on your palette. And then once you have some of that, you can start kind of playing around. So I like to just add a little bit first. I'm not gonna do red in all of these, but some just to kind of create a balance. So I'm gonna wash my brush out now that I'm done with that color. Maybe some yellow. And that's really, really concentrated, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit more water and then add that. And kind of swirl it around. And maybe, how about, let's see, let's do a little bit of purple. So I'm going to get my blue. And mix it. Actually, I already have some old purple there on the paper. There we go. You can just go in like this too. If it starts to dry up, you can make one section and then add more paint to it. It's still a wet into wet, wet technique, as long as you're painting into that wet surface. I'm gonna use a lot of bright colors because my tissue paper today is pink. So I want it to be really bright so it shines through. So 
already going to be dark. There. Okay, so that is the wet and to wet technique. The first step is just creating these blobs. What you want to do now is set it aside and let it dry. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Okay. The next step of creating this lovely abstract continuous contour line drawing is to get your images out and start drawing them using the continuous contour line drawing method. So since I am using my phone to record this video, I just found some pictures of random people in magazines, okay? But I, what you should do is choose pictures of people that you know. And you wanna also grab that, oh, it's a little wet, but that's fine. You wanna also grab your piece of white paper that was just lying around and a pencil. So when you are drawing a continuous contour line drawing, because you can't pick up the pencil, you're gonna have a lot of these kind of curly cues trying to go over lines to get to the next location. So for example, I'll just show you, I'm, I'm gonna start with his eyebrow, this kid's eyebrow, and kind of come down to his nose and then see how I can connect to the mouth and then maybe do a swirly for the chin before I get up to the hair, okay? So let me show you what that might look like. Well, I'm over here now. So see, I could kind of overlap those lines. You wanna look more at the image than your paper. That's what makes these so cool. See, I'm, now I'm reaching the hair, the ear. Maybe I can get to an eyebrow and maybe back towards the hair and the head. They're so fun, I just love these. Maybe I'm gonna get to the eye. And now I'm done. You don't have to actually complete the whole face. That's what makes these look so fun. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the continuous contour line drawing on this paper of, the, of at least, I'd say, three or four people. And you wanna try different sizes. So let me show you some examples of the ones I've done earlier. So here I kind of globbed them together. I don't know if you can see that. Here I glob them together, and then on my other page, you can see that I have, you know, some that are just kind of profiles. Some are just very gestural, so they're just kind of swirly and have less kind of visual information. So that's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna draw just a couple. I'm gonna draw the rest of my people here so you can get a sense of what that might look like. You wanna also try using different profiles as well. So. This is straight on, this is looking to the right, this person's looking to the left. It's gonna make your drawings a little bit more interesting. And you also wanna try doing, um, you wanna start from different areas. So the first one I did, I started from the nose or the eyebrow down to the nose. Maybe my next one, I'm gonna, my starting line will actually be from the eye or maybe the hairline or even the profile. Let's do that, I'll do the profile first. I'm gonna make this one small. There we go, there's another one. I could have actually maybe continued and drawn the rest of the hair out, maybe something like this. That makes it look a little bit more complete, okay? Let's do one more. Let's see if I can make an even smaller one. Oh, this one's kind of funky. Oh, it's turning gigantic. But this is what's really nice. You just kind of going and having fun with it. Oh, look, he's kind of got a little bit of hairdo. 
Let's come back around. Let's see if I can try to get down to where the eyes might be. There we go. Okay, so I have about three. I'm gonna stop there so I can move on to the next step with you all. But you want probably four so that you have some choices. Now I'm gonna, the next step can be done in several ways. So I'm gonna show you two different versions. The first thing that you could do is, let's say you have your, your drawings right here, you can just trace them as they are onto your tissue paper. So you wanna cut out your tissue paper so it's the same size as the piece that, or your piece of paper with your, excuse me, with your circle and your blobs of paint. And um, after you cut it out, then you're gonna trace these contour line drawings onto the tissue paper. And obviously you can see that they're, I need to squish them together because these won't fit. So one, I'm gonna show you that method where you just kind of smush them all together. So I'm gonna, I might even cut that one off a little bit. And I'm just gonna trace with my pencil all those lines and be careful so you don't do what I just did. I just popped a hole in it. You're gonna take your time. Okay, so I have traced the first person. Now I'm going to try to figure out how I can place my next person so I still have space for the third. Okay, so maybe, let's see, maybe I can squish him in on the side here. There we go. And it's okay if it goes off the edge because that just makes it look more interesting. Okay, and then I'll do my last one. Let's see, so I'm gonna pull it over here so you can kind of see where I put these two. And I don't want my drawings to overlap the separate portraits. I want them to, they can, they can get to the edge, just like I did here where I read this lady's hair is touching this guy's hair. So you can get to that point but you don't want to overlap those lines. Okay, all right, so now you can kind of see what I mean here. So by not overlapping those lines, it doesn't look too confusing. So that is one method. Another method is kind of doing what I did here where you can connect them line by line where you choose one image that's very flowy and you can connect them. So let me show you how you do that. So here's the face that I thought was really nice in one of my earlier examples. And so I traced it just like I did with those others. And then I created an, a connector line. And my connector line could have been maybe this hair, could be this hair right here, or I could you know, create a fake connector line down here. And then that connector line is gonna to connect to the next face. And then I would just tr trace that same face again. And I need a connector line, so maybe I'm gonna swing this chin out and maybe have one come out the edge. So that's how you do that second one. Okay, that's this one right here where the faces all connect. Don't necessarily have to do that, but it does kind of look neat. What I'm gonna show you now is the next step of this project. So that means that you're connecting your tissue paper to the piece of paper that you added those blobs to. 
So mine is not dry yet, so I'm gonna use one that I already painted. And all you're gonna do is very gently glue the back side. Oopsies, there goes my glue. You're gonna add glue to the back side of your tissue paper. You can add, actually you can add it to this. Sometimes it'll reconstitute the paint, which means just to re-wet it and it'll kind of bleed or smear. If you don't notice it right away, then you can go ahead and put the glue right on the, on the paper. And then you just wanna add your image. Make sure you don't have any wrinkles. And then just let that dry for a minute. And now we get to do the fun part and we're gonna trace with the Sharpie, okay? So again, wait for it to dry, otherwise your Sharpie will bleed. And in the meantime, you can get, while you wait for that to dry, go ahead and grab your palette again because we're gonna add a few extra details with our paint at the very, very end, okay? All right, so that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna trace with my Sharpie. Might be hard to see, so take your time. And you're just tracing all of those pencil lines so that they pop. And if you wanna get a fine line with a Sharpie, what you can do is kind of hold it so the point is, um, so the, the marker is vertical, okay? and barely touching the paper. Okay. If some of the lines are hard to see, you can reference that white paper that you started on. I'm just kind of tipping my head a little bit so I can see the other side. Okay. And at this point, once you trace, the faces, if you feel like I need an extra swirl here or a little line here, it's okay to add just a couple details, but you wanna preserve this continuous contour line drawing kind of fluid motion, and so don't mess with it too much, okay? But maybe, you know, if there's actually, if this line connects, then I need to fix that, or maybe I want, you know, the ear Maybe I need to like do a swirly for the bottom of the earlobe or something. Maybe I need a swirl right here. Just pretend that your line is is still still there, okay? All right, so at this point, you can tell like as the paper started drying, you can start to see those those blobs in the background. It just adds a little bit of extra to your paper. Now you get to add some details. So you can add some paint just like I did here, so I don't know if you can see, check out this example. So this is the same process, different profiles, different colored tissue paper, it's a light purple, and then you're, this is what you're doing right here. You're gonna fill in some of those closed shapes with paint. So that's the last, very, very last step. So I'm gonna grab some of the brighter colors and maybe make it a little bit more concentrated. And let's see, maybe in this guy's ear and the hair. You can tell it's already just, it's adding a lot more to it and it makes it look like maybe there's a highlight or a shadow. Makes some of those spaces look more realistic and easy to understand what it is. Add a little extra here. Maybe some blue to make it more defined. 
Remember, always add water to your concentrated watercolors, otherwise it'll be too dark. Okay. And then finally, make it your own. So if that doesn't seem interesting to you, maybe add a border to it. Okay, maybe you need something fun going around it. Whatever it is, have fun with it and make it your own. And then, yeah, I hope you had a good time with this. It is pretty easy other than the contour line drawing. So if you're not really enjoying that part of it, practice a little bit until you like what you see and then use those. All right, I will see you next time.